Okay, this is just going to be another tutorial, part two of the tutorial I uh, uploaded yesterday. Um, in yesterday's tutorial, I was removing a background from an image and then using the foreground image to superimpose it onto this flame background. And I'm just going to quickly open up the other image I'll be working with of Jim Larkin and what I did yesterday I showed you how to cut out Jim Larkin using the intelligent scissors and then how to superimpose him onto that flame background and now the, that would be the most common way of doing this particular job but there is a problem with it in that if you remember one of the problems we had up here with the fingers was because I didn't zoom in far enough with the intelligent scissors um, I did end up chopping off a little bit of his finger and leaving some of the background and this part on his coat was a little bit choppier and looked quite jagged because there was some of the, the background building in the way and we were just picking up little bits of residue um, from the background image and what I then said we could do is break out the eraser and clean those up a little bit but if we're going to get our eraser out we might as well go whole hog and I'll just very quickly show you how to erase everything from the background um, so we've only got Jim Larkin so we're pretty much doing everything with the eraser tool well not really, we're going to be looking at the um, freehand selection tool as well but for the most part we're going to be focusing on the eraser uh, now one thing I should point out very quickly if I go ahead straight away and start to excuse me start to delete areas from this picture or erase areas from this picture what I'm left with is a white background um, and that's not actually transparent um, if I then wanted to um, do anything with this image of Jim Larkin I'd still have to get rid of this white background as well and the reason it's white background is because I'm using a JPEG and it doesn't support transparency um, so I'm just going to control Z that to clean it up again it's not a problem that JPEGs don't handle transparency so well though because what we can do very simply is create a copy of this background image and we can do that by just uh, clicking on the layer and pressing duplicate layer and then this duplicate layer that we've just been given isn't a 100% copy because what this duplicate layer has that the background layer originally didn't have is of course that transparent background layer so if I just delete the background that we've got here by clicking on the layer I want to delete and then a the little dustbin you'll see that the layer I have now has this kind of checkered background and that checkered background is GIMP's way of telling us and indeed Photoshop's way of telling us that it is actually transparent, that there's nothing there so I'm just going to control Z that one more time so I'm working from scratch now if I wanted to delete all of this background I could obviously just you know rub all of this out and even with a, a bigger brush that's going to take ages and it's pointless and what we can do very quickly, as I said before, we can use our free hand select tool, or the free select tool, which is this little lasso up in the uh, the top left hand corner. And if I click on that, what I can do is just very quickly trace around, um, very roughly, the image of Jim Larkin. And I'm just going to do that very quickly. It doesn't have to be close to him much. Uh, it is literally just to select the area around him. Now at the moment, um, you can see these marching ants um, going around where I've just selected. That shows that we've selected Jim Larkin. Now I don't actually want to select Jim Larkin, I want to select everything but Jim Larkin. So what I'm going to do is right click on the image and go down to select and from select we're going to go to invert. Now that doesn't look like it's made much of a difference, but what that's actually done is it's flipped the focus round of um, this selection so instead of selecting the area inside the marching ants it's now the area outside the marching ants so now that I've got everything but Jim Larkin selected um, I'm just going to hit the delete key on my keyboard and you can see that that has the effect of very quickly deleting everything uh, now I'm also going to press Control shift and A and that will deselect everything so now we've just got Jim layer on an almost, uh, sorry Jim Larkin on an almost transparent layer and um, with just a little bit of this behind him. Now what I'm going to need to do is click on my eraser and anything I erase from here now will also become transparent. 
and it's just going to be as simple as deleting the bits I don't need. Now you might remember from yesterday's tutorial I didn't need Jim's feet because we were going to put him his legs below the bottom image of the flames anyway so I'm just going to be clumsy with his feet there um, but I'm going to need to zoom in so I can be precise with him um, I'm going to zoom into 200% on this time because I do want to zoom in just a little bit more and very simply all we're going to need to do is delete the area outside now I'm going to change my brushes or my brush to something that I've named my variable fuzzy brush and what you'll see this does, it actually has a much softer edge to it and that soft edge is important actually that's a little bit too soft at the moment but that soft edge is important because the soft edge is much more forgiving of mistakes and if you're new to the GIMP you do want a brush that will be very forgiving to your mistakes because you are liable to make some so we're just going to go around the image very quickly and delete everything that we don't want to see and with that softer focus it doesn't really matter if we overlap ever so slightly we can just go around and delete that now as I did before for the sake of your boredom I'm not going to make you sit and watch me delete the whole thing so I'm just going to pause it here ok and there we are that's taken me about uh, 2 or 3 minutes maybe just to finish off deleting the uh, or erasing the background there um, now what I have very simply um, is a whole layer which is pretty much all transparent except for Jim Larkin now in the previous tutorial I had Jim Larkin selected and I took just Jim Larkin and pasted him now onto the fiery image with this we don't need to do that because even if we select this entire layer because only Jim Larkin is technically visible and the rest of it is transparent Jim Larkin is the only thing we'll see so very simply all we need to do now is right click anywhere on the image go to edit and copy and then if we bring up our fire background we can just right click edit and paste into and then when we go to the floating selection up here as we did before we're just going to right click on that click new layer and we've got our new pasted layer of Jim Larkin and then exactly as we did before as well we're just going to hit this move tool and this time we're actually moving the whole layer but we just move that layer down to where we want our Jim and it is as simple as that and once again we're just going to then merge that down so we've got the image and you can see we've got Jim Larkin placed onto the fire background exactly the same as we did before um, I hope that was pretty easy to follow um, I personally like that particular technique as I said before because the variable brush that I use, that fuzzy brush um, which I might show you how to make in a future tutorial um, is actually very forgiving of these mistakes and even if you are a bit of a beginner and you're a little bit clumsy with your mouse movement sometimes the softness of the, the cuts that you're given can still give you pretty professional looking results um, so you can end up blagging it a little bit even if you're a bit of an amateur hack like myself so anyway I hope you have fun with the, the new techniques and I hope you find them helpful thanks for watching